Hey everybody, this is Tom Ballator and I am one of the community TAs for 600X. Welcome to the course. You'll be seeing me in two main places. One is over on the forums, whether that's the edX forum or the Facebook page or Discord or somewhere else, answering questions with other CTAs, basically just having a good social time with everyone. The other place is in these PSET walkthroughs, these videos in which I will be trying to help the less comfortable among you actually get a foothold on the problem sets. So the problem sets, P sets as we call them, are the challenges that come at the end of every week that are designed to test whether you have really grasped the material that was presented in the lectures and that you practiced in the finger exercises. The P sets are difficult, okay? Don't feel bad if you're struggling and that's why you're watching these videos. They're designed to be difficult, to really push you to the edge of what you should know at that point. The trouble is that it's hard to get started. So that's what these are for, to actually help you um, think about the problems. Now, this video in particular is not a piece at walkthrough per se, but rather contains five tips that I think will help you um, succeed in 600X. They're taken from my experience as a student. I took it maybe five years ago. Um, and also through just watching people and working pe with people in the course of the last five years. So let's take a look at some of the um, tips that might help you out here. First of all, make time. Okay, so this course is difficult. And you know, when you sign up for the course, you probably saw this um, syllabus that said 14 to 16 hours per week. That is not an underestimate of the time that is required for somebody who is a beginner or maybe a little bit rusty with programming to be spending on this course. In fact, in the first week, probably the most demanding week of the course, I would say, you can expect to spend 20 or more hours. So the good news is if you are spending like 20 hours on this course for the first week, don't feel bad. That is totally normal, par for the course. It doesn't mean you don't have talent for coding or something. In fact, it shows you probably do have talent if you've stuck with it that long, okay? So it's a hard course, expect to spend a lot of time. The next thing, is to read the PSET specification first. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, actually, if you take a look at the, let's see right here, yeah, the, the course itself, the learning sequences here, you'll see, for example, week one, you've got this sequence right here, it's about an hour, another sequence, another hour. These are the ones with the five or 10 minute videos interspersed with the finger exercises. What I'm saying is rather than clicking right here and diving into the lectures first, I would actually go to the problem set first. Okay, so let's take a look at a problem set. Let's say we've clicked on that. The reason you might wanna read these first is just to have some sort of framework in through which you can digest the lecture material. What I mean by that is, for example, um, question number one, assume S is a string of lowercase characters. Well, what's a string, right? Now, when you're watching the lectures, Professor Grimson will talk about strings. He'll talk about slicing into strings, iterating over strings, indexing into strings. And when you've got this sort of problem in your head, it really brings the lecture material into focus. So that's one tip that might be counterintuitive that I, I suggest you, you, you try. And actually related to that is this idea of writing pseudocode. Pseudocode, what is it? It's you know, basically whatever language you like to write in. And when I say language, for me, it would be English. I find most comfortable. I would write out in just plain old English what I need to do to solve a given problem. Okay, the logic behind it. And you'll find that this course is really about computational thinking more than it's about Python. So getting the logic down is really the key step here. And doing that in whatever language you like to write, your native language perhaps, is really a key thing. So. Read the PSET first, and then try to write some pseudocode for it, and then watch the lectures, and it'll make the PSETs a lot easier. Trust me on that one. Oh, the next one, yeah, code a lot. Okay, so we're talking about computational thinking in general, right? But you're also learning how to bend a computer to your will. And the best way to do that, like any sport or anything, is to actually do it, right? You're not gonna break your computer by any code you're writing in this course. So. Fire up your IDE, whatever that might be. Maybe it's Spider, maybe it's PyCharm, VS Code, maybe Python Tutor. I'll talk about that in a second. Be typing, be trying things, be making mistakes, be always improving, okay? Now, related to this is the way you consume an example in the lecture. So for example, 
One of my favorite ones when I was taking the course was Professor Grimson was talking about how to find the square root of a number. And he had maybe 10 or 15 lines of Python. I think it's in the second sequence in week one. The first time I saw it, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's pretty hard. Uh, I didn't understand some stuff, the conditions, what was happening. But, you know, after watching the video a few times, like, oh, OK, I know those lines. I know what's happening. And then there's like a finger exercise. Oh, I couldn't do it. Right. The fact is, just because you see something on the screen that somebody's presenting to you doesn't mean you actually understand it, even if you think you do. So the challenge is, let's say you've got that example, the 10 or 12 lines for finding the square root. Pause the video right there. Go to your IDE from scratch. Try to code the same exact thing. If you can do it, you're great. OK, odds are you won't get anywhere near what you think you can do. So what I do is I'll try that. I'll get a couple lines done. Then I'll be like, whoa, wait, what was happening there? I forget. Take a look at what the actual solution is. OK, get the hint. Go back, do a little bit more. Uh, I forgot again. Go back that iterative process. And once you finish that and got it, erase it again. Take a little break. Try it again from scratch. If you can do that, wow, you will be in great, great shape. OK, so another thing, learn how to debug. OK, so debugging has a number of meanings here, reading error messages, print statements, Python tutor, Marmot. I'll explain what these mean, but debugging is more of a, a frame of mind in a sense. It's impossible, except for maybe like hello world programs to write a program from scratch that doesn't have bugs in it. They are just going to be there. So when you run your program and it doesn't work as you expected, be happy because that's normal. All right. So because that's normal, you should embrace debugging. Simple things like reading error messages or, in fact, reading the instructions. OK, that's really important. You'll see that in the problem sets. Read the instructions, read the error messages in the terminal that say syntax error line 10 or something. Those are pretty easy ones to handle. More difficult bugs are logical bugs, which, you know, you think something should be happening, but it's not for whatever reason. In that case, you know, inserting print statements is a great idea. Put in a print statement for a given variable. Let's say you have a counter. You think it should be changing in a certain way, but it's not for some reason. Odds are, if you put in some print statements and watch them in your terminal, you'll be like, oh, that's not happening when I think it should be happening, for example. OK, the other thing is Python Tutor. Awesome tool, by far my favorite tool for learning Python. It's basically you have code on one side, then you have like pictures of what's happening in your code on the other. Uh, the next one, Marmot. Yeah, Marmot. You probably know a Marmot. It's like a beaver kind of lives in the Rocky Mountains. Um, I have a Marmot right here. Why am I talking about that? I'm talking about that because um, when you're really stuck, this guy happened to help me. Some people use rubber ducks to talk to. I talked to this guy. And what happened was when I was taking the course, I think it was PSET 2, it was about 2, 3 in the morning or so. I was stuck. You know, everyone in my house was already in bed, obviously, right? I didn't have anybody I could talk to, talk the problem to, you know, say, hey, here's what I'm trying to do in this problem. So my boy Jake had left this thing laying around and maybe late in the evening, <laughs> acting a little strange. And I talked to it and I explained, okay, here's what I'm trying to do. When you get out of your own like head and you try to explain something to somebody, um, that's when you realize like, oh, hey, this is what I'm really thinking or I should be thinking, but it wasn't what I was thinking. It just helps to get out of like your own head, essentially. OK, so um, that's what the marmots for. Find your own tool, work with it. Last thing here is to develop a can do attitude, basically a positive problem solving mindset. And when I say that, there's a lot of things about this, and it's related to debugging, I think, but you've got friends, OK? You're not alone in this course. Um, it's difficult, but if you want to make progress, you have to accept the difficulty and try to fight to find ways to get the solutions that you need, OK? Now, if you're alone, that can be overwhelming. The fact is, though, that you're not alone. You can go to the forum. You can post questions. Post laser focus questions, please don't post something like, I don't get it. Post, here's what I don't understand about this snippet of code. I've tried, you know, these two or three things. It's just not working the way I expect. Can somebody help me? Then you'll get a lot of help. 
other things, you know, for example, there's a textbook that you might get somehow and uh, use for extra help. Um, Dr. Bell has produced her own book here, which is really, really nice for practical Python examples, sort of daily life sort of Python stuff. There's a lot of other resources. You know, be creative, find things that help. For example, some PSET walkthrough videos, perhaps. Anyway, I'll see you in the course and uh, best of luck with coding. Bye bye. And there's something about putting things into new words, explaining it to some. Sorry, Marvin.